we're headed up here and we're changing gears. We're going to chase elk instead of mule deer. So we're gonna work our way up and we've actually already spotted just a few elk, but we uh, well, we got about a mile ish to go till we get to them. And as you can tell, my hard breathing, we got a, a little bit of a pull, but we're pretty light, and we got Mark and Eli with us, and they've got their llamas, which is nice. Instead of packing a 70 pound pack, I'm packing a 30, 35 pound pack. <laughs> so, we're gonna get up here and get a little closer to these elk. Mine on my mind, or something. <laughs> <laughs> Can't 
trying to wait on these elk. We got elk just about 180 degrees. All are, we're in a pretty good spot here as long as the wind holds, but we've got, well, you never know, but it seems like they can either, they can go one of two ways. We're at a Y intersection here, kind of on a point, or two drainages. I think um, I think we're in the right spot. We have classed up at least one legal bull. Lots of cows, but we have one legal bull, maybe two. Good now. So, well, that's I mean, look at me. You guys are all. I'm sitting here. I got this and a t-shirt on. It's all I got. Oh, I got a vest on.
sun is shining on us here. It's gonna keep rising. It's gonna at least be rising a little yeah. bit. Hey, get your hat straight. You can't. You can't be representing when your hat on crooked. I wear mine crooked all the time. Yeah, he's always like this. This, this is cold. Okay. With his headphones on. <laughs> That's right. That's when you know things are getting serious. I got some good video of him. <laughs> Spraying that shit around my nose. Okay. So far, as long as Mark and Eli don't screw it up, everything's going according to my plan. I brought you into our honey hole, packed you in with my llamas. <laughs> so. This is the face I want to crawl up, but you, we got a belly crawl when we get up. We're not there. belly crawling, we're just going to get by that tree. And then we're going to yeah. just put our eyes over, over the ridge. We're in another tree, maybe, on the right. Yeah. We can go to the tree on the right. Yeah. Yeah. Because we want to be on the down slope. Let's just, just go, let's just take our, let's go slow. We're behind you. You're set the face. Brian and Mark together. Some of you, I would say, older generation may remember the comic Mutt and Jeff. I'm pretty young, but I remember seeing them like on old ads or whatever. But that's what you get with Mark and Brian together as Mutt and Jeff. It's always a good time. They always argue, and they always push each other's buttons. It's quite enjoyable. Yeah, right. I'm not saying we're hoping he's coming out. Yeah, let's just get closer and decide if we go left or right. Don't be, don't be jacking it up. We're tight. We've been on them all day. We're like ninjas, okay? Well, there's four of us. We're like ninjas. We're in orange. Close the distance to about 400 or so. We'll 
Chelsea.
nice. It's really nice. Probably two year old. The back straps for days. Tender loins. I think we ought to shish kebab these tender loins and eat them in the tent. Like in celebration. Like manly celebration. You gotta pack it all out because I'm not. Yeah, you're on your own, dude. <laughs> like, he who kills it packs it by himself. Are you down? How greedy are you? <laughs> Five fingers or zero in there? <laughs> he's, You'll never know. He's three hot hands. Gritty. Dude. Alright folks, I hope you enjoyed this week's film. I'm joined right now, as you can tell, by Mark Livesey, the legend. Mm -hmm. um, this was a fun hunt. We had a good time. Your son Eli was, was there and Brad was there filming. Yep. Uh, it was a special little hunt. It was short. It was like just two days. Yep. And uh, yep. we filled two tags. Uh, it was a tight little hunt. And uh, you were mentioning how important you, f you think this is for his growth as a young man. Um, touch on that a little bit. Well, like we were talking about, you know, this is kind of a, this is a really, this is an important topic for me because I'm watching what's happening and we are punishing men for being men now. Yeah. Men being a man is bad. Mm -hmm. Almost in this country right now. It's, it's almost like under attack. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And even that's one thing. But the second thing is that boys are just, they're not growing up be, doing anything hard. Yeah. Everything's handed to them. They're, they're taught that they're owed this, they're owed that, they're entitled this, they're entitled mm -hmm. that. Oh, that's not fair. I, I told Eli from the day one when he, when he knew, when he could understand English, fair is for four year olds. Mm -hmm. And I tell him that second place is the first loser. If you walk up to Eli and you say, what's second place? He's not going to hesitate. <laughs> He's going to say, second place is the first loser. And then if you say another thing, if you say, if you're not first, he'll say, you're last. Now, don't take that the wrong way. Winning's not everything. Yeah. But if you're not trying to win, then you're a loser. Yeah, and that's what in I my book. Yep, and that's what I tell my kids, too. Is like, I don't care when, uh, yeah. win or lose, but if you're trying your if hardest. If you're not trying to win, you're a loser. That, yep. Losing is... Is not a result of not trying to win. Mm -hmm. you, you know, it's the effort. Yeah. But this this giving award mm -hmm. to participation stuff, I, I, it drives me nuts, Oville, right. right? Tell me how you really feel. Well, <laughs> it got me fired up. I love it. So Actually, now, you know, I'm the let's, same go, way, now like, let's yeah. move forward to hunting. Okay, so my wife and she, thank goodness my wife is really behind me on this too. She's nervous when he goes. Yeah. She doesn't want to say it. but I mean, yeah. Especially for she like says, 10 you, days. She goes, where are you taking him? I'm like, well, we're going here. She goes, isn't that the the big grizzly spot? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> well, what are you guys going to do? I'm like, going to shoot some elk. <laughs> she goes, well, I mean, you know, yeah, she, yeah. she's nervous. That's natural. It's mom's natural. To but she also knows that. She's raising a man. She's got to raise a man and that he's got to learn how to do hard things. Mm -hmm. I'm convinced in this country, you do not have to look around much to know that we've got some hard things coming. Yeah, yeah. Is it going to be next year? I don't know. Is it going to be 10? I don't know. But there's some hard things on the horizon, boys and girls. I'm telling yeah. you right now. And I don't want Eli. I'm not going to be here forever. I don't. I want him armed mm -hmm. to the teeth on what it takes to be able to do hard things. Mm -hmm. So I always wanted him to be a hunter, right? But I, I had to be really careful. I didn't push him. I took him the first few years. I'd take him a couple of days. Like when he was with yeah. us. Yeah. 
it really he got kind of robbed a little. It didn't be it wasn't as much as I'd hoped. But he only got like three days, right? right? And after those three days, all he could talk about was, "Man, I wish I could have gone more and stayed longer." Because Brian didn't give him ice cream. I mean, I yeah, and uh, <laughs> and so you know he was, and, and we missed some opportunities that he really was upset about. Yep. So he his resolve was set. So this year I told him, I said, "Dude, we're going to do a combo elk deer ten days." Mm-hmm. And it's going to be late season. It could be bad weather. It could be this. And he never even batted it. And I, I mean, the dude wears shorts year round. The dude, the cold does not even yeah. phase that boy. But, um, it was, it was tough. It was. This hunt was, uh, the, the film shows it, but I don't know that it shows it as much as it was because it was pretty cold, pretty windy. And you know, when you're late season, there's a lot of, there's a lot of sitting around waiting for the animals to make a move yep, yeah. and to get in the right position. And that's the time when you can, it's really gets cold, right? Yep. And uh, but anyway, not just the cold, the deep snow. Remember, we're well. Some of us are five nine. <laughs> some of us are a little more. <laughs> He's like whatever he is. So the snow is a percent, so much percent deeper. And and, and his dad didn't buy him. He warm still has boots. a longer he stride had, than Brian. He had so uninsulated <laughs> boots thanks to his dad. And I did not set him up very good on the boot situation. And but. Did he complain? No. The no. Dude, I mean, I knew his feet were cold. Didn't complain. I was really proud of him. But what I was most proud about him is what you said. Is like that dude, when he gets focused on something, he's in the game. He's like totally mm-hmm. focused. And uh, he might be aloof at times on the hunt, but when, man, when it came time, those shots. Yeah, well, he was in. He was just What running. I noticed, he literally took, like, even when I was, as I'm behind the camera on that cow, I'm like, got a shot. Like, take the shot. But I didn't say it, you know. And he was just so calm, cool, collected, and just boom. And then it goes off. Like he took on that particular setup. Like that cow kind of popped up. Mm-hmm. We were losing light. I'm like, Eli, should pull the trigger, pull the trigger, pull the trigger. I didn't want to say it, but I'm thinking it. Mm-hmm. But he didn't. He didn't get out of his cycle. He squeezed that trigger just like he normally would, and it paid off. Oh yeah. And uh, you know, he the typical reaction for that type of situation is lay down and just shoot. Yeah. But he didn't let that. He didn't. No, he, didn't he, still, he still went. Joel, Prou- Joel went, Turner would be proud because he yeah, still he went through his went process. Through his process that he's that same thing he does at the range. He did exactly the same thing there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, I was really proud of him in that. And then he made some other great shots the rest of the year um, that we'll probably see coming up. But yeah, yeah I mean, I look at this whole experience, and um, it's very easy, I think, for dads to leave the young ones at home. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, we all want to get after it. We want to hunt. We want to chase. Uh, and yet, um, you know, you're taking the time to bring Eli along. But it's an investment for the future. You mentioned this earlier to me. You're at a stage, a phase in life where this this is your chance to, you know, raise a man, bond with your son. But also, roles are going to reverse soon. And he's going to make it so you can hunt longer because he's going to drag your old ass around the mountain <laughs> because this is what happens when you have kids at an older age. <laughs> and I told my wife it's a bad idea when we started trying to have kids at 40 ish. And so now I'm going to pay the price at 57 versus 13. Keeping you well, young, man. He's well, keeping you I'll, young. I'll have to, I have to say this cause I'm a father of three boys, you know, they're mm-hmm. nine, six and four. They're on their way up to hunting and coming out in the field with me and stuff. Yeah. And, Mark, you've done one hell of a job, you know, with, with your boy. It ain't me. It's my wife. No. No, I, it's you. Like, it's you as well because, you know, I hope that what you and Eli have in the field and, and the toughness that Eli has, I hope that my boys have the same well, thing. I appreciate that. You know? He's, um, I mean, I've been around it for two years watching you guys, and I see what my dad did with me, and I hope I can do mm-hmm. the same thing with my kids, you know? We have some big giveaways that we have going on. Mark is doing a giveaway. Yes. So Mark is giving away. Get this. Ready, folks? A, a Harvest Right freeze dryer. You and mm-hmm. Ryan Lampers have your own uh, little hippie thing going on with <laughs> um, food prep and, and, and all that. So we have a, a Harvest Right freeze dryer, which is worth, I think, about 2700 bucks somewhere okay. in there. Yep. And also an Alpaca Raft. Yep. We're looking at the Caribou. Yes. Alpaca Raft, Caribou, uh, roughly. And they're going to throw in a couple accessories for that raft. So you're looking right around 900 to to $1,000 for that. So that's really cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We love doing this stuff. Uh, we, we basically, on every video, we, we're going to try to give away some stuff. It's our chance to give back to you guys. Mm-hmm. It's a chance for you guys to support us in return as well. 
So we love doing these. We have another one going on right now with uh, Go Hunt yep. and with Mountain Ops. Yep. So big hunt packages with both companies. When you shop over at Mountain Ops right now, you get 20% off. Yeah which is more than my code usually does. Use the code gritty, you get 20% off, mm-hmm. but you're also entered to win a Peaks TP. New Peaks TP, Loophole, ascent, yep. backpack. Loophole, loophole Binos, um, Peaks Gear, you know, trekking pole, mm-hmm. headlamp. There's a lot of stuff in that giveaway that... You'll see it on the screen. Yes. 20% then, off too is huge. And then Go Hunt. Got, if you need anything hunting related, go to the Go Hunt gear shop. Mm-hmm. They're hunters like us. And when you shop there, it supports a hunting a hunting company. Yep. And they've got some great products over there. At the anything you want, uh, canvas cutter, bed rolls, pretty much everything we stealthy hunter rifle covers run. They kind of sell over there too. Yep. So when you use the code gritty, you'll get a discount. But you'll also be entered to win a big package over there too. Yep. So Mark, let's talk about your giveaway. Someone can win a freeze dryer and an alpaca raft. That's a three thousand four thousand dollar four thousand dollar package package Mm -hmm. so that's pretty cool now let's talk about what it is to be entered to win they just have to to spend they will they have to buy a uh, map course well are the new toolkits they're called i really struggle with the name (laughs) because i needed something to say what it was and i needed something that wasn't like so so long so for people that don't know Mark does the e scouting mm-hmm. courses, and you've been on the podcast a number yeah, of times. Yeah. It's an excellent class online that teaches you how to scout for elk, how to find elk. We've done a number of podcasts on it for people who don't know. Yeah. <clears throat> so what 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 they need to do to be entered to win is simply get one of the courses, one so, of the kits you know, you mentioned, or toolkits. So, yeah. So when we launched the e scouting elk course, you mm-hmm. were a big part of that. It's really specific for how to find and locate places that hold elk and how to put your hunt plan together and a strategy to go after it. Right. It's not a lot of tactical hunting. It's not, it's, it's strictly, I mean, job one, if you can't kill elk, if you can't find them. Right. So that's what that course solves. But as I built that course, one of the biggest questions and the biggest hurdles that people were having was I was trying to teach them how to set Google Earth Pro up mm-hmm. to do this next level e-scouting. Right. And there's so many data sets that you can bring into Google Earth that can make it just extraordinary, right? Yeah. And it's But you're going to 20, 30 different locations <laughs> to amass this data. Yeah. So I had this idea to build these toolkits. Uh-huh. And they go hand in hand with the course. We talk about the data and how to look at the data, what the data means. But it, it was complicated for the users to build their own. So I just launched them. Yesterday. Yesterday. This, as we're recording, they just launched yesterday. And so, um, and they were only available to the members that are ready. I just wanted to do a soft. Yep. And so they're available. And I have Wyoming, Montana, Idaho, and Colorado finished. And each one of those states includes about 14 different so the big sets. elk states yeah the big yeah. elk states oh I'll, I'll throw this in there too that's it's even though it's tailored to elk hunting it helps you in every yeah. avenue of hunting. For well sure. these toolkits are, are really all western game it's one click you download one file you install that's- it into google earth and you got everything so those toolkits are available and they kind of go hand in hand with the course or if you feel like hey I, this e-scouting stuff i know what i'm doing I just would really love those toolkits. Mm-hmm. You could buy them. They're totally available separate. Independent. From, yep. Independent. So it was for every toolkit you buy. So every every map you, you buy, entry, you get one entry. One, yep. If you just need Wyoming, guys, just buy Wyoming, right? 20 bucks gets you entered to win. That's right. You yep. get one entry. But if you buy the ultimate, you, you get, get 10. 10 entries. Yep. If you haven't had the course yet. Um, you, you can't go wrong. I'll tell you, everyone who's ever bought Mark's e-scouting courses mm-hmm. has uh, had a life-changing moment. If you if you haven't done it, if you think you're really good at e-scouting, you're probably not at this level. Yep. There's very few that uh, dive into it like Mark does. <laughs> Appreciate that. This is for real. Like wow. It's well worth the money if you're interested and you want to you wanna improve your game, yep. especially uh, with mapping and scouting. So uh it's it's well worth the investment plus right now you can win a pack raft and a freeze dryer Mm -hmm. if you buy and again if you only want to spend 20 bucks you can get entered to win yep check out what those toolkits are like and what they're about 
Well, it's um, technically not even twenty. Nineteen dollars. It's technically not even that <laughs> because if you use the code gritty, uh, you save you're saving ten percent on every anything yeah. anyway. Yep. So, yep. Um, but when we do the calculations, we'll base it on the purchase price, not the discount price. Yep. Anyway, that's just to say, Mark brings it to the table and it's well worth the investment. Mm-hmm. So if you are interested, support him. And when you use the code gritty, you're entered to win. And that helps us too. We love doing all this stuff. I hope you enjoyed the film. Um, we, we've been reading your comments from last week's film, which was the moose pack out basically, yeah. yep. which included miles and miles of river rafting. And you're so welcome forth. everybody. Cause we've got lots of comments. You're like, I'm glad you guys did this episode. I, I, I was really? kind of, I was going to skip it. I have not it. watched that one yet. I, I was going to skip I was going to skip it. It was just a lot of packing. <laughs> but in the end, uh, I'm glad I didn't. People really appreciated the the float down the river. Mm-hmm. Um, it does put it in perspective what r- really took place when you see that many that much bone and, and meat ha- around camp. It's a, it, was a, it was a special experience. I, I'm hoping I can do it again someday. It's not as easy logistically as, as I'd like it to be. Yep. We, we, got, we were fortunate to, to pull it off. Um, but uh, we're gonna keep researching moose, and we're gonna we're gonna do moose one way or another every other year or so. Somehow they keep telling me I'm going on the next one. Yeah, so. <laughs> it, it'll happen. Brad, they tell but, me all kinds of things. <laughs> but we said we would do a giveaway for someone. Uh, we're giving away a sheep feed orthotics for someone who left a comment last week. Mm-hmm. Brad is thumbing through I'm... the YouTube per usual. If you want to be entered to win a pair of sheep feet next week, just leave a comment uh, below. Actually, it won't be next week. We're going to announce the winner yep. January 9th or the, 10th. The week of January 9th. We're which is when we're going to announce the Go Hunt winner and the Mountain Ops winner and the Livesey winner. Yep. We're going to do uh, the YouTube and the Instagram winners as well on that day because yep. we're going to take some time off. Yes. For a couple of weeks. So yep. uh, we're pre-recording some of this stuff. But uh, Brad, who's our winner this week? Who won a pair of sheep feed products? So we got Mark. Berzinski. Sorry if I butchered that. It says, awesome adventure. Getting a moose is on my bucket list. Probably be in Ontario, Canada since I live in Michigan. Beginning to be a gritty fan instead of a hush or rut. I can relate <laughs> more to your style. So, and that's those are randomized comments. And then this week, if you leave a comment and we find it very creative, yeah, we are going to pick another winner for that. Yeah. So we're doing two. Mm-hmm. Um, we're going to do it both ways. Maybe you're not the most creative person. Yep. And you're like... Dang it. I don't want to leave a comment because I'm not that creative. Well, you'll still win a pair of sheep feet or thought or be entered to win, be entered to win. (laughs) I should say. But if you want to go the extra mile and try to compete, like write something funny, make fun of Ryan's hair, whatever it is, we'll be happy to read it. We're going to just pick the comment. We like the most. Um, Maybe it's funny. Maybe it's insightful, deep, whatever. We're going to pick that and we're going to give away a stealthy hunter rifle cover to that person. So, Two giveaways for leaving a comment on YouTube. Like I said, one is just random, and the other one is going to be uh, completely biased. We are going to pick that one. <laughs> you guys are kind of taking this giveaway stuff to another level. Man. It's fun, dude. Well, there's been there's been some incredible like. I feel we, bad that we didn't pick them, you know, because they've been seriously. very creative in their. Yeah. Comment. I'm reading the comments and I'm going. This dude needs a prize, yeah. but he doesn't end up in the random. And I think it's just search. the Ryan Lampers insults that I love the most. Yeah, there's, so it's no. all great. I think it. It. it uh, we try to read every single comment, mm-hmm. and we're keeping up. I mean, it's a big job, it's but a big job. We really do want to hear what you guys have to say. The feedback is great, and uh, yep. we like interacting with folks through through the films. And it's no joke. Like, I mean. We're pretty like, busy like, for like, two days. Like this film is there's 900 comments for yeah. for that last film. Oh, you know? wow, We're getting 1,200, 1,500 comments. So. so it's great. We thank you so much. And then we have an Instagram winner. Yep, Brad. So we got Stash, and this was, is for a pair of peak trekking poles. This is poles. for a pair of peak trekking poles. So we got Stash and Tines. He says, "What an epic Alaskan adventure! The amount of meat packed slash raft out is insane." Watch the last video on the gritty YouTube. Nice. So he's got a picture of Lampers with this big old moose. Right on. on the backpack. Stash. Stash and Tines. Well, congratulations. So, yep. uh, everyone who wins, hit us up at grittybowman at grittybowman.com mm-hmm. on email. And we will uh, get in touch with you and we'll get your prizes shipped out to you. Yep. And the last one I want to mention, we have right now until January 1st at Go Hunt. Mm-hmm. If you purchase the Insider membership, which gives you all the Insider tools mm-hmm. and scouting, if you use the code GRITTY100, you're going to get $100 to the Go Hunt gear shop. Yeah. That's a cool one. Yep. If you share uh, this film, the one with Mark and Eli and I, mm-hmm. 
this elk hunt. If you share that on Instagram, we're going to give you a dark energy battery pack. We just pick our favorite one on Instagram. It's completely biased. We just kind of read through. <laughs> well, sometimes, sometimes. Sometimes. It's a little random, a little bit of both, yeah. you know, um, kind of. There are times I've put them in a spreadsheet and just given everybody a number and randomized it. Other times I'm like, oh, I like that comment. Yep. So, so but, I, um, sorry if I didn't pick you. you charge, you can just do what you want. Yeah. Right? yeah. So yep. lots of giveaways going on, but we're going to keep doing it. We're going to, we, we literally go to our partners and we say, Hey, we have a new film drop. Do you want to run a giveaway with us? Do you guys want to pitch in? And they say yes every time. Or you just do it and then <laughs> beg, say, we already hey, said it. Hey, we we're told people we're going to give that away. <laughs> we're begging you to give it to us. Yep. Yep. No, they've been, no, they've uh, been great. Great. So, mm-hmm. um, Mark, let's get into the, the discussion on the hunt here. You know, uh, we, we go up there. We met up. We head up there. We pack in with the llamas. And we only have like. We really only have two days. The evening we got there, which was pretty late. Now yep. we did see a bull, a legal bull, but it was getting too dark to to get after it. And uh, so then we had two more days. Yeah. And so it was a short window, and we ended up getting. Uh, I shot a bull, and Eli shot the cow. Mm-hmm. Um. Tell me a little bit about this experience with Eli, because I I was able to hunt with him again later for the mule deer. I'm really impressed with. I'm really impressed with him. Now he does he does sort of obsess over how much ice cream I eat. I was going to say he's pretty <laughs> impressed with your ice cream sandwich eating ability because he will not stop talking about it. <laughs> we were at a gas. Where, where were what were we doing? I don't remember. So we pulled into a gas station, just grabbed some snacks, and you know it's it's minus one hundred. Um, <laughs> not really. It, it's it's cold, and so Brian goes in and gets some ice cream, and Eli looks at me, and I'm like. Dude, if you want to get some ice cream, just get some ice cream. It's good. We get out to the truck, and Brian's unwrapping his ice cream sandwich. He eats it, like, immediately, and nothing, no big deal. And then all of a sudden, he's eating another one. And I'm like, I'm looking. I'm like, okay, yeah. And then he's eating a third one Dude, I'd... at the same, like, one after the other. <laughs> They're going to so, melt. <laughs> so Eli's like, are you eating three ice cream sandwiches? <laughs> and... Brian Call immediately became his hero after that. <laughs> and uh, so now we'll be in some random spot, and he will say, do you remember that time that Brian <laughs> ate those three ice creams? I'll, I'll get three ice creams at a gas station, and then I'll take a picture, and I'll send it to Mark and Eli. Yeah, so he's right. not allowed to hunt with Brian anymore, because before it was like, Eli would always ask, is Brad coming? Yeah. Now I'm just no, I'm just chopped liver you're, over you're here. Dead. You're no. dead to Eli. You're dead to Eli. <laughs> what, what I found with Eli, though, that fascinated me was uh, how calm he is under pressure. Mm-hmm. Now, have you noticed that? Is that how he's been his whole life? Or is this something you've lately seen come on? What is it? it he's, you know, he's pretty, the dude's a pretty good athlete, too. So mm-hmm. he plays hockey and he plays football. And when he plays hockey, you know, we're not Missou- We're not Montana uh, originals. Natives. So when we moved here, he was really behind starting hockey. They start playing hockey when they're like one. Okay. A- in Montana, right? It's it's from day one. Yeah. So he rolls in here at like uh, what was he nine? So mm-hmm. he's four years behind everybody. But he just gets in there. He's just getting killed, getting killed. He gets better and better. Now he's pretty dang good hockey player, mm-hmm. right? But I've just watched how – the reason I said that is just even watching him play hockey, he goes out there, he's ultra competitive, but he doesn't let it get to him. He stays focused. He's on a mission. Mm-hmm. He's He scores goals. He gets right back to business. Well, there's no over – there's no celebrating that. There's yeah. no – it's time to go back to work. Mm-hmm. He's always kind of been like that, and I, and I didn't really – translated to hunting yeah until i saw him in the field yeah and when i started taking him to the range that dude at the range is like ice in his veins when he gets on that gun and he gets in the scope and i you know i'm not a great shot i'm from missouri <sighs> we shoot deer at 100 yards dude i mean and i come <laughs> to montana i'm like holy crap i gotta get a turret i gotta i gotta get these things yeah, yeah, right yeah. so <clears throat> i'm working with him on shooting i'm trying to be joel turner which i'm not and so I, I hear Joel turn say something, and then I just tell Eli, right? <laughs> so, and I'm telling him about trigger pull, and every, and he just gets it. And so um, he's shooting, and I'm like, dude, this he's this out shooting me. Yeah, one thing that you won't see in our footage, um, we go after a deer, and we're getting hit with a windstorm, a snowstorm. Mm-hmm. It's kind of a blizzard. 
uh, and Eli gets set up two or three times. You mean after an elk? No, this was a deer hunt we were oh, on okay, a little okay, bit later. Deer, yeah. Remember, and, and the snow was filling oh, the yeah, scope. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I was so impressed because he got set up, and the deer is out there, and this is a tough shot, and the snow is a challenge, but he's he's getting through it, and then the deer is like, I've had enough, and starts to bounce before he was ready. Mm-hmm. So he repositioned, set up, deer bounces, repositions, set up, and he, you're trying to shoot through a blizzard, and the snow is filling the scope. It's like, filling it up. The wind drift is bad, and... uh I think I, I was I was blown away that he didn't pull the trigger. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because the it was in there. It was in the scope, but it just wasn't in there long enough in a situation he felt comfortable yeah, enough he just wasn't good, comfortable. to pull the trigger. And I saw so much like maturity. I, I'm telling you, and this doesn't speak wise of me or well of me, but at his age, in that moment, it would have been a gun range. It would have, <laughs> I would have lost it. I would have well, flung some lead, and I'll say and this, it would have ended yeah, badly. I'll say this too, like even when he shot his cow, was he initially we set up on the elk, we were looking at him, and then the cow first cow disappeared. And then I was like, hey, there's another cow right here. And how quickly he got Acquired the target. Acquired the target. Well, we had to rearrange. It was impressive. We had to resume, rechange yeah. the zoom on the scope. Yep. It's getting dark. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We had to throw down in the deep snow. We didn't have any time to, we again, barely got it on the pack. Again, in that moment, you're like, he's dialed, he's on it, and then he takes the time. Dude, the three of us were, we shot. were way more animated than he was. Dude, like, I'm always animated. We're like, do That's, this, do that, do I, this. And he's I, like, I, I induce stress. <laughs> people uh, that is very true um, yeah. <laughs> brian will ask you are you like why are you not shooting are you ready <laughs> yeah i i am i'm in i'm i'm intense but um i saw that but um we talked about this offline i think the audience can relate anybody that's a father a mother or parent we live in a world right now we talked about before we turn the cameras on we we live in a world where young people aren't i don't think they're out there being challenged in this way. Mm-hmm. And not- I was I was shocked because most kids wouldn't want to go do what we did. It was zero or negative yeah. temps. Deep snow. deep snow. He's hiking with a 20-pound pack on. Yeah. It's the middle of the night coming out. We killed every animal at night. Yeah. yeah. So you Think about every pack that we had for that whole 10 days was in the middle of the night. Right. Yeah. Yep. I'll say this from hunting with Eli last year and you. And then seeing his growth in just one year. And Eli's, what, 13 now? Yeah, he's 13, yeah. Like, dude's impressive, honestly. Well, and I, he's I, just I, like me. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was cool. You know, yeah. so we spent, we were on the, we were like living like gypsies, right? On this, with this. We camped, we slept in the car, we slept beside the car, we slept in a wall tent. And a, if you and drove a through a town road. in the middle of nowhere and there were llamas in a parking lot or on a sidewalk. We slept behind a casino um, and we had llamas staked out behind a casino. Um, yeah. We were all over the place. Did he not, he never once said to us, hey, how long are we going to, are we going to oh, keep no. on? No. Are we, oh, is it time to go home yet? No. Nope. He loved Because he knows, so his mom always tells him, hey, if you want to come home, you just call me, I'll pick you up. <laughs> and before we leave every time, that's what she says. And I'm like, quit saying that. But he, he's never exercised. That dude's <laughs> not calling. No, he's not. He's not. No. And, um, and I'll, I'll be honest, you you and Ryan have both, and I got to say something, since Brad was so not nice with my comments, <laughs> I'm going to say something too. This is something to pay attention to, guys, if you're listening to this. As a dad, it's nice that your son looks up to you and you want to be in that role, but they also have to have role models mm-hmm. outside of you because that's what's going to – sometimes that makes an even more impression on a young man. Absolutely. And it started with, with Eli, with Ryan on that hunt. Mm-hmm. When Ryan and he crawled up that hill with Eli and Eli is kind of thinking about shooting this buck and he's like kind of talking with Ryan about – well, would you shoot it? <laughs> you know, he's like, he's on a hunt with Ryan Lampers, which he really enjoyed that. But now he get he got to go with Brian, but Brian kind of wimped out on us on the on that <laughs> last year. And both of you guys, he, one of the reasons he's so tough on those hunts, he doesn't want to let me down, but he doesn't want to let you guys down either. Mm-hmm. And it's really nice to oh, watch that. Dude, he's, I'm racing him to the top. 
Dude. He's there to prove to me that he can hike faster, which yeah. isn't. Let's just say <laughs> that's not hard. To that's do. not a hard challenge. <laughs> um, but yeah, I what I like about Eli too is with he and I our relationship is. I give him crap. He gives me crap. He doesn't let it. He, he doesn't sit back there and not say no, anything. No, no. <laughs> he 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 hips he he heaps ridicule my way, and then I heap it right back, and it's mm-hmm. really fun because. Um, it's it's just fun to have that that interaction that banter and the more I was around Eli the more comfortable we became but also what I really enjoyed about it was um you know putting a camera in Eli's face you never mm-hmm. know how people are going to respond Eli is like get that camera out of my yeah, face <laughs> you, you see him he starts to like he's going to have I'm to gonna, that part's going to have to grow on him a little he, and I a I little bit like Ryan Lampers he kind of shuts down a little bit and I'm like this is not the Eli that was here 5 minutes ago <laughs> no talking crap yep. this is a new Eli that's like turn the camera off turn the camera off you know so I yep. think it's great though he's he's pretty soon he'll be he won't even oh, notice yeah, it's there did. it'll be no it'll be once he gets used to it you know the one thing that's nice about your kids are far more capable than you think they are mm-hmm. and, and again I'm not giving a parenting but I'm just telling you my thoughts yeah I, I sometimes people take it like I'm telling them or I'm how to do their parenting right. or whatever. Yeah. You, you guys bear how you want I'm just I've been on this planet 57 years. I've done some bad things. My dad was terrible. I wasn't lucky like you. Yep, I, mean, I had a, yeah. the worst dad ever. So I made a commitment to break the cycle, you know, like, yep. and so I didn't want that to be the case. But those kids are so much more capable than you think they are. And usually their limitations are because you are limited. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Like with Eli, I don't have to think about how far we're hiking. I don't have to think about how late we stay out. I don't have to think about, cause the dude's just there. Yeah. Yeah. He's ready to go all the time. Far as you want to go. Um, but that doesn't happen overnight. That's, that's a process of you bringing him on trips year over year. If you don't include him, they're not going to do it on the yeah. vacation, on the summertime, spring, as well as the fall, which, you know, develops that character over time and, and that i don't drive. shy away from throwing him in the fire either right like yeah on yeah. that trip i said go take care of the llamas go feed the llamas go water the llamas it wasn't pleasant it's yeah. zero degrees the llamas are tangled up and the sagebrush is cold and every night we got back well the one night when we got back when you guys killed the your mm-hmm. bull and uh we felt bad because we didn't help you guys pack it <laughs> i said eli we got to get them firewood ready in their and have a big stack of wood, and it's dark, and I'm like, we got to go find the tree that Brad was cutting on. <laughs> this is like a half, almost a half a mile God, away from I couldn't camp. believe we found yeah. it. Anyway, we find it, and we cut. The, and Eli's got this giant armload of wood, and and uh, we go back, and we got it done. I said, doesn't it feel good to know that you did that, and we sawed it up? And Yeah, man, that was that was good. But I could tell when I said we're going to go get wood when we it was late. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He was not thrilled about no that. Doubt, no doubt. But he's in it. He's in it. Warm in that Wilderness Ridge Trail Llamas tent, <laughs> <Yeah>. you know. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, no. Well, I'm I'm glad we did the hunt. I hope people enjoyed the film. If you did, leave us a comment. Like we said, we're going to pick our favorite mm-hmm. comment and we're going to give away a, a Stealthy Hunter rifle cover. Yep. But if you just want to be entered to win some sheep feet, just say hello. Just leave it. Random comment. Anything. <laughs> and uh, and then Instagram. Share it on Instagram, and we'll do dark the energy. Dark Energy Battery Pack. And then don't forget about our other giveaways going on right now. If you want a alpaca raft, freeze dryer. Freeze dryer. That's, mm-hmm. that's pretty incredible. Yeah. It's a great giveaway Mark's putting on. Just go shop at Mark's shop. Um, it's the uh, – how do they find your shop? Treelineacademy.net. I just okay. rebuilt the website. So I hope it's good. I hope you guys like it. But I kept getting a lot of comments about, well, I want to know more about what I'm getting with this elk course. Yeah. I want to know more about what these toolkits actually are. Mm. And so there's just, there's a yeah. lot more information than there ever been. So, so it's just, there. just go check it out. And if you spend 20 bucks, you'll be entered to win. But you'll get 10 entries if you buy the big uh, – Western. Yep, the ultimate Western hunt package. He, yeah, he's having a lot of trouble. <laughs> Dude, pronouncing, these pronouncing long, long, like they're so generic, boring <laughs> names. Wilderness Ridge Trail <laughs> could have been like the tree line package. <laughs> like, <Jordan. come> <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> but uh, no, I like tree line. That's yeah, easy. Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. Uh, I like gritty. You see that? It's like two syllables. I was going to tell you, I do <laughs> like that hat. I, I, you know, I don't know what it takes to get one a little bit. <laughs> I'll hook you up. You got to beg and plead. Yeah, I'll man. hook you up. So, uh, folks, as always, thanks for tuning in and supporting our show. Leave us a comment. We appreciate all, all your support. 
and stay gritty.